Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it, and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hey, hey everyone, my name is Sarah McCarthy and I am super excited that you are joining me as we break down the following standard, which is ma.5.ar.3.1. The standard says, given a numerical pattern, identify and write a rule. So I'll have to identify and write a rule that can describe the pattern as an expression. Okay, for example, the pattern given is six, eight, 10, and 12. And it can be described using the following expression, which is four plus two X, where X is the term of the pattern. By the way, this document that I'm marking up all over is not something that I created. It's something that the Florida Department of Education releases to the public. I'm just showing you how I use this document to understand the standards, to break them down myself in order to create resources that are aligned to the best standards in your taking on the best membership. All right, so some clarifications. Rules are limited to Rules are limited to one or two operations using whole numbers. Some related benchmarks that are used and aligned with the standard. This AR.2.1 is, is where we are going from numerical expressions to mathematical descriptions and vice versa. And also this 2.4 standard for AR is where they are given a situation and they have to create an equation. So in this case, we're given a pattern and we have to create or identify the rule being used. You need to know the word coefficient, the term coefficient, and that is the number, the value that is with your variable. Previously in fourth grade, they did have a standard on patterns where they had to identify, create, and extend a pattern. And then in sixth grade, they will work with fractional and numerical patterns. In this section, the purpose and instructional strategies section, there were a few things that jumped out at me that I'd like to share. The first one is that students are supposed to identify and write an expression that shows the rule for a given pattern. This is kind of a tough one because students have been using and working with patterns since third grade, right? But in this case, they're not just saying that you need to add three but you're having to create an expression and it's a little bit more challenging than you might think at first. We need to make sure that our vocabulary, words like coefficient, terms, variables, should be interwoven with this benchmark and that we can use the rule to determine future terms of the pattern. It says during instruction, teachers can have students compare their rules and justify them. So for example, a student might create this expression where another one might create this expression and in this case we have a property of addition here that just states it doesn't matter the order of your add-ins the value will be the same so both students in this case would be correct and we also want to pair this with the next standard ar.3.2 because we'll be using um, input and output tables and this is going to be important for the middle grades for middle school all right some common misconceptions I said a common mistake that students make is to determine a rule based on the change only in the first two terms. So just looking from one term to the next, but the rule has to work for all of the patterns. You should be able to apply this expression to any and plug in any term number for X and get the output that you're looking for. Okay. For this type of standard, just looking here, like the, the work itself is looking for the rule is not 
the challenge. It's going to, but this is going to be a challenge when we're writing it as an expression. And it's going to require a lot of practice. Expect for your students to be like, wait, what? At first, but with more practice, they will build that confidence muscle and it will start to make sense, okay? So let me show you what you have access to with your membership to Taking on the Best. Here we are on the website. You're going to click the tab, Members Enter here. Click Taking on the Best. You might need to log in too. I'm already logged in. I'm clicking fifth grade, the AR strand, and then scrolling down to this one right here. MA.5.AR.3.1 Writing Rules of Patterns as Expressions. So we have two video lessons for your bronze resources. If you're a bronze, silver, or gold member, you have access to these video lessons right here. The first video lesson is Writing Rules of Increasing Patterns as Expressions, and then you just have this document right there. The second video lesson, we have decreasing patterns as expressions, and we have your printable right there. I'm going to go ahead and click on the silver plan because I'll show you what the video lesson worksheet looks like. So if you have a silver or gold membership, you have access to these silver resources. Here's the video lesson that we were talking about, okay? So we have to look at this pattern, write the rule as an expression, and then determine the future ninth term, the value of that. And just keep on going. So it looks pretty simple because we're adding three here. It looks pretty simple because we're adding four. It looks pretty simple in number one because we're adding five. But really writing the rule as an expression, we, it takes a little bit of trial and error to figure out an expression that will work for any term in the pattern. So if you do not know how to get started with these as a teacher, I would definitely suggest watching these video lessons where we break it down so that way you can start to understand what your students might run into with their misconceptions, okay? Then after you watch the video lesson, if you have the silver resources, you have extra practice right there, okay? That looks just like what we did in the video lessons. Here's the video lesson for decreasing patterns that goes with the bronze. And then you have extra practice. This is your math mission. So in this case, we're using what we know about perimeter and area to identify a pattern. So it's taking it up a notch. It says three rectangles are shown below. Determine the perimeter and area for each. So this one would be considered your first term, your second term, and your third term. And imagine that the pattern continued with the length increasing by one centimeter for each rectangle. Describe the pattern of the perimeter using an expression. So this is a great example of, of how to use, how this is, can be embedded in the real world. And then we're looking at the area. So it's identifying the perimeter, it's the, using the area, and there is an answer key here. So if you're like, I don't even know what to do here, take a look at the answer key and it will show you, okay? Finally, we have the math misconception mystery, which I need to change this. The problem itself, has this three taken away, just so you know, and it's just 13, 23, and 33. I will go in there and fix that. So by the time you see this, hopefully it has been fixed. Unless you have the workbook, you might just need to cross that part out, okay? But basically, you just click play and I'll walk them through it. I'll say, okay, go ahead and pause the video, solve the problem on your own. Then after they solve the problem, they will watch as four characters solve that same problem. Three of them will make a mistake that students commonly make, and only one student will solve it correctly. One character will solve it correctly. Those characters, by the way, are just me dressed up in silly costumes having some fun. Finally, they'll fill out the detective report, highlighting who the most reasonable answer belongs to, and evaluating the work of the others. Okay, for the gold resource, here we go. If you have the gold, you have access to everything. You have a mini assessment included. There we go. Okay. We have an answer key right there for that mini assessment. 
you have this episode of Breaking Down the Best available right here with all of your other resources ad-free. Now these videos are available on YouTube, but it is a nice little perk of the gold members to have it right there with everything else. But the main reason that most people choose to get the gold membership is because of McCarthy Math 155. The 155 stands for 155 grade level videos. It's a daily math intervention that's aligned to the common core standards. Now, I know that we're in the best standards now, but a lot of people were like, can you please make this part of the package? So I put it there because there is a lot that does trickle over. Not for this standard. This is a new one. Um, but if you know that your students need help with any of these skills, which a lot, I mean, we have multiplication, division, numerical expressions, operations with decimals, operations with fractions, a lot of these still apply. Maybe you need some practice with perimeter and area because it's kind of aligned in there too with one of the problems. If you go to another grade level, we've got third and fourth grade videos that have perimeter and area. Okay, so lots Lots and lots and lots of resources available to you with McCarthy Math 155. All right, I think that's it. So I hope that this episode helped you to understand the standard better, to understand what the expectation is and what resources you have that are strategically aligned to the benchmark. Before we go, let me remind you that what you do every day with your life, it really does matter. Thank you for stepping up every day to lead your students, to help shape them so that they can grow into the best version of themselves. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your educational world. And I know that you're busy, so I will see you on the next episode, okay? All right, bye. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.